morning, everybody. Good um, everybody well? Just make sure that you've muted yourself. Um, has anybody heard of the um, app Zoom Escaper? Well, the fact that you haven't, nope. Now, Warren, that's quite interesting. I know that um, because of COVID, um, they had to add an additional meaning to the word Zoom in the dictionary, believe it or not, yes. Um, and um, that was just the start of, um, of everything because now um, some clever guys, and I know that the people obviously um, fake their presence in Zoom sessions. Um, they don't really want to do this session. So um, it's just one meeting too many and now um, Zoom Escaper is an app that you can that you can um, download, and that gives you a range of background noises from uh, the dogs barking next door to a construction site to a baby crying, whatever. It's just to um, sort of distort um, um, and create a very irritating background noise. Um, in your environment and therefore um you would have said guys i'm sorry i've got to attend to this before i can and they will probably excuse you from the meeting or not um that's probably the nicest way of doing it rather than just uh um, not attending the session at all or um just linking up um and then muting yourself and um, shutting off the video um, and then you go for a cycle or something like that so People are coming up with creative ideas on almost on a daily basis. Um, it was quite interesting to see that, uh, and I've actually I've listened to some of the noises. It's it's rather, yeah, it's 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 actually entertaining to be honest. Um, but no, on a more on a more sort of um, um, academic note. Um, firstly, I want to give feedback some of the questions that was asked um i've addressed the session yesterday with another group as well the um, the third years um where they asked for guidance regarding um completing an assignment and i'm obviously always willing to give you some some um, assistance but um there are some questions that require you to do additional research you will not find everything in your um, you will not find everything in your textbook um, you will find maybe just a page in a textbook um, and then there's additional sources um, resources that um, we either add on canvas under additional resources let me just get them on as well and then um, sometimes in your slides and you'll see on today's slides there's extra um, links that's provided and videos um, uh, that we refer to or even resources uh, that we refer to. Uh, one of the questions was regarding um, part two, which obviously um, part two can effectively only be, com um, be completed once we have finished today's session because that's when we finish um, chapter five on um, reference groups and, uh, and social class. Um, so yes, um, Questions regarding the LSM um, that um, you referred to part two of your assignment. Um, there are resources that's, um, that will give you more information. Um, but again, it's the focus should be on the application itself and not necessarily on, um, on the, the textbook um, related information. Um, Social class, we've, we've done the different reference groups in, in our session on, um, on Tuesday. There are 16 different reference groups um, that marketers have identified, um, formal and informal, um, primary, secondary, uh, um, 
dissociative and um, aspiring groups, members and non-members, those are, um, well, your main oh, 16 groups, eight groups. Um, yeah, those are the four, those are the eight uh, reference groups that is commonly used by marketers. Um, but apart from the reference groups and the important role that they play on influencing your um, not just your buying behavior, um, but also your, your social behavior. Um, social class plays a very important role in, in, in your social behavior and, def and, and directly impact on how you buy, when you buy, and how much you spend, um, and what you spend it on. Um, social class is, is, is commonly just referred to as um, a group of people in a particular country that has sort of equal status in a particular community. Um, they formally or informally um, socialize on a regular basis um, and they very much have the same sort of um, behavior patterns. And it could be based on any of those um, categories that's listed on the screen from occupation all the way through to where you actually reside or where you stay, where you live. Um, it's those categories are ones that's commonly used to um, to break down statistics that's available on social class. In general, however, social class, uh, we'll see on the next slide, social class in South Africa, um, although there's usually just um, uh, globally used three main categories, um, upper class, lower class, and middle class, um, the South African one, we have we've added two, um, and we'll see it on the next slide. Uh, so there's five categories, but the three main ones, um, upper, lower, middle class, is, is obviously um, um, is obviously present there too. Now, it is very difficult. Um, you'll find that in your more established um, first world countries, like the UK, for instance, and America, that your social class structure there has more of a diamond shape. In other words, you've got um, right at the top um, a small percentage of people who are filthy, filthy rich. You have a very small base at the bottom, lower class, and you've got a very, very big um, a middle class in the middle. That's why it's a sort of a diamond shape. As opposed to your developing countries like South Africa um, and Brazil, for instance, um, Argentina, um, you'll find that those countries have more of a um, triangular shape um, social class structure, where again, the percentage at the top um, is also um, a small group of people who earn a lot of money um, and a very, very big um, bottom lower class and upper middle, um, upper lower class um, section. Uh, and that's probably where our biggest problem lies because um, people have found it significant um, the social class um, category that you find yourself in as a consumer, um, that they have designed a, um, a measuring item, what they call the Gini um, coefficient, which basically refer to the, the gap between the richest person or the richest people and the poorest people in a particular country. And obviously, the bigger the gap, um, the more triangular you, the, the shape of the social structure in your country would be, uh, and the greater your social challenges would be, because um, um, yeah, there's a there's an enormous gap. And South Africa is one of the top five in the world when it comes to um, our Gini, um, our gap between the richest and poorest in our country. If you look at the um, social structure in South Africa, um, and there's a nice video that you can also have a look, just to um, the video itself um, basically um, is just gives you visuals on, on um, the huge differences between the different social classes in South Africa. Um, we can then also have a look at um, those who have made it very successfully. Um, these statistics is um, these statistics are most recent um, as um, the oldest source that I use um, for this um, to compile this information is December 2020 um, and then also um, end of January 2021. So this is reasonably updated. Um, 
Jeff Bezos is still the richest person in the world. Um, basically, um, in um, the Amazon guy, um, for those who don't know, um, he stole, I think, 182 billion US dollars um, is what his worth is. Um, it costs about 2,730 2, billion rand. Elon Musk, South African born, however, he's not a South African. He's obviously the Tesla and the SpaceX guy. Um, came up second. Um, I think um, Bill Gates is third. Um, and then somebody that I've actually over a period of time because of his consistency amongst the top five, um, Warren Buffett. Um, Warren Buffett is, I think, if he's not 70, he's definitely close to 70, but um, I think he's older than 70, as a matter of fact. Um, he's the fifth richest person in the world. Um, very interesting individual. Um, started off at the young age of 12, collecting um, bottle tops, Coke bottle tops, and selling it um, to companies who um, recycle it. Um, and he's done very well for himself. Um, he has the eye for a good um, for a good investment. He's the individual that says that every time people start getting scared uh, and they sell their stuff because um, there's a parent um, dip in the market, that's when he's looking for bargains and, um, and that's when he buys. Um, interesting individual. Um, he owns probably three or four airlines, but uh, he still flies commercially. He's got obviously a lot of his own private jets. Uh, I think he's got a, a private jet company as well, but he still flies commercially. He still drives an old Toyota Corolla, uh, stays in the same house that he, um, the first house that he bought for himself. Um, very interesting individual. Um, but yeah, um, that's what you have to earn in, in excess of, um, uh, in excess of, and I think he's, he's only, he's fifth on the list, but he's, he's, he's run about, um, He's around about 97 billion US dollars. Um, it's still a lot of money. Um, and then on average, if you want to be in the top 1% of um, the wealthiest people in the world, you're looking at earning 200 to 300,000 US dollars. Uh, that's about three to four point five million um, per year. Okay, so it's it's, it, it just puts a lot of things into perspective. We we also see always these filthy rich individuals um, who, um, <laughs> yeah, who earn two point six, who is who's, who's valued at two point four six billion US um, or South African rands, like Elon Musk, for instance. But if you look at the top one percent, um, it's actually not a lot of money that uh, that you have to earn to be in the top one percent. If you put it into context, and you can visit those sites um, if you want more information about um, the richest people in the world and exactly how they've become that that rich, um, you can go to onto those websites that I've um, that I've listed there. If, you, if we apply the same to South Africa, just to put it into context, um, the richest man in South Africa is Nicky Oppenheimer. Uh, so I have the beard on the right hand side um, of the two images um, and obviously he's made it, and him and his family made the, their money through the um, the beers diamond mining company um, and to put it in the context as to where he fits onto the biggest scale of things um, Jeff Bezos is on 182 billion dollars uh, the richest man in South Africa is on 7.7 .7. Um, Jan Rupert um, is the second richest person in South Africa, um, and he's obviously earned his money from um, through luxury items. Uh, Richmond is specifically um, European-based and, um, and known for that, watches and jewelry for, for the rich. Um, and if we, again, put everything into context, if we want to be one of the 1% uh, top 1% of um, um, wealthiest people in South Africa, you look at um, you look at earning 2.82 million South African rand per year. Again, it's if we put it into the context, it's actually not that astounding, but it just shows you 
how big the middle class and especially the lower class is if that um, is going to get you into the top one percent okay um, some of the questions are questions related to um, your assignment part B about the living standards measure which is basically just a, a, a tool that is used by the South African um, um, Research Council or Marketing Research Council to um, um, sort of uh, use as a method to segment the consumer market in South Africa. Um, you don't have to know all the um, um, living standard measure levels, there are 10 of them um, by heart and in great detail. Um, you just need to know that um, there is a method like this that is used or tool like, like this that is used. Um, it has been replaced by, by, um, by an additional um, a measurement or method that is actually slightly more accurate. Um, interestingly, though, know, is to see which criteria is used um, to determine the standards of living in South Africa. Uh, the LSM used um, the following. Uh, accessibility um, to um, flush toilets, microwave ovens, credit cards, fridges, freezers, and hot running water. Um, I think to a lot of us, majority of those items um, are sort of, okay, right, um, isn't everybody supposed to have one of those? Um, interestingly enough, it's not the case. Um, there are very poor people in our country and a very, very big percentage. and. Um, I think, yes, um, our most recent world recession, as well as the um, COVID pandemic, has added to that um, with effectively, yeah, I would say close to 38% of our population unemployed at the moment. If you want more detail on the LSM, um, the next two slides will provide that to you. The slides um, or the um, diagrams and, and illustrations that's on the next two slides are from that um, book that I have included there for you. Um, the sixth edition of Lamb and Hair. It's, it's a marketing management book. Uh, it's the book that the BCom students who study um, business management and business marketing use. Um, it's the prescribed book. Um, and on those pages that I've listed, you'll find this information and more about um, the LSM. Um, I will upload the, um, the detail of this book also to, to Canvas so you can access it. I'm not sure. Um, you can maybe contact Mrs. Van der Berg, Mrs. Lucille Van der Berg, um, the librarian here on campus. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I do believe there is an ebook version available, which is probably going to be helpful for you. Right. Um, as, as we said, um, the LSM is, is a, is a, method that is used to measure social class um, and living standards regardless of race um, or specifically using income as a variable. They use wealth access to the resources that I've, um, to the amenities that I've mentioned on the previous slide um, and geography and where you live um, as, as, the, as the main um, variables um, to determine um, the different levels of the LSM. Okay. Importantly, um, why the LSM? Why was it? The LSM was necessary because we needed to um, segment our market of consumers in South Africa. Um, and not limit ourselves to one variable, uh, because it's quite easy if you just use income, or we just use race, or we just um, use education as a criteria that um, it would be, um, it, it, would, it would paint um, um, an incomplete picture. Um, the important aspects to, um, from this particular um, slide, as well as the next one, is in this particular case, uh, we're looking at um, the different um, household incomes um, of the different levels. Um, you'll see that the lowest one um, is, is on average just 2,200 rand, where the highest one level 10 is 45,700. 
um, it obviously is important because it um, affects your buying power. What you can buy with 2,200 rand um, per household, not per person, per household, um, is, is, is obviously not a great deal as opposed to the 45,000 um, monthly um, household income um, that the LSM level 10 uh, earns. The next slide is also important because from a marketer's point of view specifically, let me just readmit um, Ruan, um, from a marketing point of view, it's in a marketer's point of view, it is very important to know the different, um, which of these LSM groups or levels have access to what form of communication. So in other words, if you want to market your products of the company that you are representing, um, you need to know if your particular market segment have access to the internet. Um, obviously, somebody who's, who's earning 2,200 rand or a household who's earning 2,200 rand a month is not going to have access to that. Um, and you will have to use different um, approaches to get your in, information across. Um, you'll see that on level one there, for instance, they have access to, um, to radios, obviously, because the radios um, um, are battery operated too. Uh, so although they might not have access to electricity, they definitely have access to radios. Um, and therefore, if you want to communicate with them as a marketer, you'll probably, um, you'll probably ensure that um, a radio commercial is part of your marketing campaign. Um, the LSM is a very useful tool to help you determine what your marketing communications mix is going to look like. In other words, um, what form of print media and what form of electronic media you're going to or is available to you to reach your target market. Okay, you can go into greater detail. Uh, I'm not going to go into greater detail on about this, but the slides, the previous slide, as well as the, the current one, um, is definitely going to help you a great deal to complete part two of your assignment. Um, if you want more information, as I said, please, uh, marketing management um, manual or textbook uh, that is prescribed and that will be available from the library at Prestige. Right. LSM is not um, foolproof. LSM has over a period of time gradually been replaced by a different marketing segmentation tool and that is called the Social Economic Measure or SEM. Um, the SEM is, is, is not as dependent on durable products as the LSM and they have used different um, variables and criteria um, to um, categorize the different market segments. Interestingly enough, important to them, or some of the most important variables or criteria they've used is um, how near are you to your closest police station or your post office? Um, water resources, are there water resources near area? Running water, I mean, uh, do you have to walk 10 k's to just get to um, a tap um, that might be dry? Um, is water um, um, distributed mobilely um, to um, to the areas that you're in and then obviously the type of sanitation um do we have we're probably going to um link that to the previous one because um your toilet facilities is obviously going to um, be different to people who don't have any running water and it is a huge problem in south africa as a matter of fact i just read an article last night before i was very abruptly interrupted by um by um, load shedding, that out of all the children in South Africa who study, they either go to preschool or go to primary school or high school or um, colleges and universities, um, I think 10.1 million actually um, means of transport to get to their classes is walking. It's an uh, interesting fact, um, but again, just something I'm, I'm dropping um, for you guys to, to think about. Now, 
your social classes is obviously going to impact directly what you buy because um, it will determine your lifestyle. Um, if you work five kilometers underground in the mine um, for 10 to 12 hours a day um, and you take home um, a wage and not even a salary because it's not um, because it's so small um, what you're going to purchase first obviously are your most um, um, are your most regularly used consumer goods um, it's going to probably be food um, more than anything else food and drink is probably very high on the list of people in that particular category um, merely just to survive and nothing else um, strangely enough um, well not strangely enough it it is a, a very common that um, consumers want to as, or aspire to obviously move through the different levels of the social structure if you are lower class you want as an immediate next step to become um, um, middle class uh, and so to the top to be in the upper class um, and very often your decisions as to what to purchase um, is, is linked to that you often buy products like um, clothing and cars and jewelry to elevate your status to that next social structure level um, As a case in point, we can look at, I don't just admit Natalie as well, in case in point is the five top products that our new emerging middle class is actually purchasing, if we look on the bottom of the screen. They want a car? Yes, I suppose that's something that um, most of us have on our wish list um, early on in our lives because it gives you independency. I mean, um, there's a lot of things that you can do when you have a car, good or bad. Uh, music center, um, fashionable clothing, education, and a TV set. If you can tick those five boxes, um, you will find yourself uh, at the upper end of the middle class in, in South Africa. Um, but again, why are these things important to us as marketers? It's important because we gather information in this regard as to what we can um, market to certain groups, um, which, which mediums we can use or should use to get the message across to them. Um, and obviously because people in these different segments will have similar behavior patterns and similar decision-making processes that they go through. Um, the decision-making process, which is a chapter in itself later on in, in, in the course, um, is, is very much similar for people who who all earn 2,200 Rand a month. They are probably going to buy similar products because 2,200 Rand only stretches that far. People earning um, 45,000, 50,000 a month are going to go through a different, they're going to still apply the same processes uh, or the same steps in the decision making process, but um, they have a different reference that they're going to use to gather that information. For the one is purely to survive, for the other is actually to uh, enhance their status or to keep their status in a particular social structure. Has anybody got any questions at this point? No questions? Are anybody still alive? Very much looking forward to the long weekend that's around the corner. I'm pretty sure everybody's looking forward to the long weekend. Uh, for those who haven't noticed or haven't um, been awake for this week, um, next Monday is a public holiday, so there's no classes. Right. What are some of the things that social class determines? Well, firstly, um, consumers buy products that um, as I've just said, communicate or display their status in a society. So the consumers in a similar social class will obviously exhibit similar behaviors and they will 
um, aspire to also um, buy similar products, basically. Um, you'll also find that the location of um, and, and the type of um, um, shops that um, is frequented by the different um, social classes are, are similar as well. Um, we, certain individuals will buy at certain clothing stores and, and other social um, structures, um, people from a different social structure or social class will buy from a different shop. And some people will not be seen dead in a particular shop um, because it's going to um, it's going to affect their image. Um, I think that's one of the biggest challenges that a lot of people were faced with last year during the um, hard lockdown or the latter part of the hard lockdown um, level. And it was that they could not maintain the lifestyle that they led prior to it because they either took salary cuts or they either lost their jobs. Um, there's not any one of probably most of us, if not all of us, know somebody who, um, or if it's not somebody close or family member, at least a friend or a friend of a friend, know of somebody who uh, lost their life as a result of um, COVID-19. Um, I think pretty much similarly, we all know somebody or know of somebody or um, that has lost their jobs. Um, it's it's been it's been tough, and people had to sell their houses. Uh, they had to change their lifestyle. The one good thing, however, is that you've realised actually how little you can get away with. Um, and it's it's almost like um, the phase that we went through a number of years ago in the Western Cape when um, we ran out of water, um, and we're very close to um, to day zero where the taps would have run dry. And all of a sudden people change the, um, the, the patterns of using water um, because they realized it was scarce. Um, and as a result of that, everything was, was turned around. Um, we've had two very good seasons of winter um, rain in the Western Cape, so the dams are full and they are fuller than they were last year at the same time. But still, people are continuing because they're in the habit of um, of conserving water um, and or using water um, um, better. Um, and I think that is that's 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 all for the good in the long run. Um, and and similarly, um, your behavioural patterns for different social classes is also very important um, to to. Um, to maintain your status um, and, and social class rather than try and live on a level higher to what you can actually afford. That's where, yeah, when something like a recession or a pandemic hits you, um, that's basically the end of it for most of us. The other important thing is the media uses that I prefer to, uh, because it will definitely help you to, um, um, if you have access to to internet, um, it just um, opens more opportunities to be educated, um, and um, you can even stay at home and do online courses for that matter. Uh, we are doing it at the moment uh, because of the COVID restrictions. Um, a number of students allowed on campus. Um, you've become familiar with it um, since last year. Uh, and it's almost as if, okay, um, I'm, I'm going to class. Cheers, see you tomorrow. or will see you later today. Although you're only just going to your bedroom or wherever your, um, your computer is set up to, to do online class. That's, that's become the norm nowadays. So marketers will obviously have to modify the way in which they um, they communicate with their consumers or potential consumers, um, as well as what they communicate to them. Um, I definitely have, n prior to COVID, not used a delivery service. I'm not talking about uh, Mr. D. Um, or um, uh, I've never had my groceries from Pick and Pay or Spa or ShopRite or any of those shops, checkers. Um, been delivered to my house. 
I still go to the shop and I buy whatever is necessary. Um, firstly, we were forced to maybe uh, change that um, that routine as a result of um, the restrictions last year. And I've become used to it uh, and I'm using it more often nowadays. I still go to the shop, yes, but um, I think it's become a convenience as well, where initially it was a necessity because we couldn't travel. Um, and now it's become a convenience and you're used to it and um, more and more people are using those services nowadays. So that's an additional service that um, some of those big supermarket retail outlets have, have now used. Um, and it's, it's um, almost the new normal to us and, and pe more people use those services nowadays. And obviously it's important for, for marketers to know that. Um, and then, yeah, give the feedback to the um, to management so they can change the strategy of the business and maybe even change the products and the product range uh, or the mix of products that um, the business offers. Right. Um, the Bureau for Marketing Research, BMR Research, um, they obviously regularly do um, research and they are the individuals who use different formulas um, and equations to um, provide us with, with the statistics that, um, that I've shared in this session today. Uh, it's done on a continuous basis. Statistics South Africa is a, is a, a fantastic um, a resource to use to, to get information. You can Google almost anything and it will immediately pop up. Uh, it's updated uh, some more regularly than others, but um, it is very important to to um, to have access to this. And I think I look forward to the new statistics that come out because, um, yeah, it, I think it's updated um, on every seven years in South Africa. Um, the latest numbers indicate that um, our population has grown to close to 59 million, as opposed to where it was, um, I think, around about 54, 55, um, seven years ago. So it's important to know that because um, it, it determines how big the um, population is and how uh, big your buying market is. How many of the 59 million people um, are elderly? Uh, in other words, who's probably going to revert to um, uh, to, to online shopping, um, or will be using services where um, where they get home deliveries? Um, how many people in the age group um, under 35 are actually employed? Um, it's it's interesting um it's interesting interesting statistics but it's also very important statistics but it's also again of no use if we don't use it in our marketing efforts and that's why as a marketer you will be continuously doing research forever you will find the new information and um we try and incorporate obviously that process and and start that process when we ask you to do assignments where you have to do additional research uh, and not just run back your textbook all the time Right, um, I'm going to end the session. Um, we're definitely not going to take the entire 20 minutes of the second of the second um, um, to finish the hour. Um, the chapter is almost finished, so um, as soon as we return, or, um, um, ask me any questions that you have before I, I just finish off chapter five. I'm going to end the session now, and I'll see you in a short while.